give me a happy marriage. That prayer cannot be answered. I'm not cursing anybody. The prayer can only be answered when you have done what you should do. God will not do. You can't ask God in prayer to do what he has already commanded you to do. As a young man who just started a ministry, when we printed our first publication, very, if you see my picture on that publication, one color, you know, poor printing, but that was what we can afford. They said, Pastor, we have print, brought the team. Pastor, I did on color. They said, they said, come and bless it. <laughs> you know, they used to look at me like this man is crazy. I said, Father, in the name of Jesus, this publication must develop wings and fly to the White House. They opened their eyes at. And fly to Asorok. This publication should be an extension of the hem of his garment. I said, we release this publication to every four corners of the world. Hmm. When we finished the prayer, later they told me that if this publication can just saturate our streets, it's a, it's a miracle. But you are sending, how many copies did we even print? You are now telling God that he should get to, you know, it is understanding. It is understanding. Understanding that you can, be, you can start small and see greatness in what you are doing. Successful people are successful because, not because they have not done small things before, but they do small things in a great way. They do small things, what? That's why you hear things like, it's only granite I'm selling. You say, no, you are lying. It can't be granite. I'm only a carpenter. I just told you a story of a lady carpenter. Who, look, we have a, the best female farmer in Lagos State last year. Is it like, oh, last year? Came from here. A lady farmer controlling millions. So it's not the name of your business that is limiting what you are getting. It is your mentality. You have been deceived. Satan has deceived you. He said this thing you are doing is a small business. He told you, he said, don't open account. How much are you making that you are opening business account? What are you opening business account? Lorielo. Meanwhile, if you want to be great, you have to learn to do small things in a great way. If your income is 1,000 naira per month, go and open account. Opening of account is a sign you are ready for greatness. Am I correct? Before I ever saw one million naira of my own, one million naira, 2005, God told me, go and open more accounts. I said, the one I have, how much is inside? That I will now open three, four more. He said, I'm telling you, go on. So I went, I took money from the other one. I splitted it. I opened in uh, Intercontinental. I opened, you know, just open. Then a few months later, 2006, one day, somebody called me, Pastor, are you coming to Ikeja? I said, yes, I should be in Ikeja this week. He said, please, touch our office. I entered the office. They said, Oga said, we should give you this envelope. I collected the envelope. I thought it's normal 10,000, 20,000 check. I did not even open it. I got home. I tried to open it. I saw it's one million naira. I threw the thing on the floor. I stepped on it. I said, one million, shame on you. Shame. So now you be this. I didn't even kill myself over you. Just look at you. I said, I take dominion over money from today. That was just the beginning. I prophesy. The things you never thought can happen in 10 years, as you begin to operate in the supernatural, they begin to happen in the next 10 weeks. In the next 10 days. In the name of Jesus. When you are operating in the supernatural, you are calling the things that be not as though they were. Hmm? You are conscious of who you are in Christ. They are telling everybody, no, there's no money. There's, you are telling yourself, no, there's money. If you start operating the supernatural, you'll be different because every other person, they're operating in the natural. So if you're not different, it's because you're not yet operating in the supernatural. Did you get this? 
So the day you start operating the supernatural, you'll be totally different. You'll talk differently, you'll act differently, your approach will be different because you are, you are exploring the backup, the supernatural backup that you have as a child of God. After today, you will not be alone. Yeah. The next negotiation you go for will be in your favor. Yeah. The next job you seek, you will not miss it. Yeah. The next dream you dream of your work, it will come to pass. Yeah. Shout a big amen. Yeah. So he said, so if Satan used deceit, this is where we are going now. If it is deceit Satan is using, how does Satan deceive? I said number one last week, he uses people. Because how will Satan talk to me? He uses people you can trust. Sometimes when Satan wants to deceive you, he will use somebody that is close to you that you can trust to pass an idea to you. That's why you need to know the Bible. So that every word that comes your way, you scan them through the knowledge of the word. You scan them to be sure that this is balanced. Some of the people that are giving you advice, they are not, trying, they are not bad people. They are good people. They don't know more than what they, they are saying. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So if you don't have the ability to, if you don't know the word of God, you can be easily deceived. So he uses what? People. He uses people. When he wanted to stop the people of Israel from entering Canaan, he didn't use the Syrian. He didn't use the Jebusite. He didn't use the Philistines. He used 10 rulers from 10 tribes of Israel. They came back and deceived them. When he wanted to confuse the destiny of Jesus on earth, he used the mouth of Peter. A right hand man that he can trust. But thank God that Jesus is very sensitive. He looked back and said, get thee behind me, Satan. This one you said, it's not you that said it, it's Satan that said it. So you have to be sensitive. You have to understand the word of God that when people give you advice, beautiful advice, very nice advice from the love they have for you, but based on their own level of understanding. When it's come through your, the knowledge of God's word, you know this is not right. This is not what God wants you to do. Are you following me? So he uses people. He uses people. He used people for David. David said, I'm going to face Goliath. His elder brother said, uh-uh. So you are that, this, your pride has brought you here again. This is your arrogance. Now, why did, Eliab, why did he use Eliab, the elder brother of David? Because if he just used ordinary people, David would not believe them. So he uses people you can trust. Number two, he uses situation. Situation. An event will happen. He will package it. It's just an event. Oh. It will make you feel that is your life. Let me give you an example. You fail an exam, for instance, or you, you failed attempting to get a business, or a business failed in your hand. Satan will blow it up. And make you look at that event like that is your life. If you're a pastor here, let me tell you how he does it for pastors. He will use somebody to, he will use an event to happen. Something will happen probably in the church. And one or two people who that thing happened between you and them, they will show a lot of hatred to you. And Satan will tell you that they all hate you. You want to die because of them? They all hate you. And that's a lie. It's just a small fraction. He's blowing it up. It's, it's not like you were told, it's, it's into deception. So he blows it out of proportion. So you will now make a major decision based on minor situation. Small thing will happen. You say, hey, your husband doesn't love you or your wife doesn't love you or, 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 or uh, they are trying to kill you. <laughs> One rich man, <laughs> very popular, very wealthy man, he ran out of the house. He has plenty of houses everywhere. So he went to another house. So they asked him, ah, okay, why are you now living alone at your age? You are older. He said, they want to kill me. <laughs> they said, who want to kill me? He said, my children and my wife. He said, because of the property, they are planning to kill me and I have seen it. Now, that ogre, when does he need his wife and children most? Isn't it when you are getting old that you need that kind of company? 
So Satan wants to go and kill him silently somewhere. He will bring a situation and blow it out of proportion. Everyone deceived there. Maybe you're already deceived. The light of God's word will shine over those areas and expose the deception of Satan. Everywhere you have been deceived, the light of the word will expose the deception of Satan. So he uses situations and circumstances to manipulate us. You don't allow your situation to speak to you. Stop listening to your situation. Goliath was their situation. They listened to Goliath. If you read the story of 1 Samuel 17, their problem majorly was that 40 days and 40 nights, Goliath was bragging and they were listening. Your situation wants to talk to you. Don't listen. Goliath wants to talk to you. Please don't listen. Your situation wants to tell you that ah, all your age mates have gone. Look at you, only you. Only a year. Look at your life. <laughs> That's your situation talking. You are happy when you left the house. You become sad. He's trying to manipulate you. In 1 Samuel chapter 17, verse 11, the Bible says, when they had Goliath, 1 Samuel 17, 11, when they had, Goliath, they had their situation, they were greatly afraid. Who you listen to determines your state, the condition of your heart. If you listen to your situation, you'll be afraid. If you carry the doctor's medical report and, and, and overanalyze it and look at it too much, fear will grab you. In fact, people die more of fear of what they said they have than what they have killing them. Are you following me? I will never forget many, many years ago. A young lady walked to my office and cried and cried. What is it? She cried and cried. What is it? Then she brought out a medical report. And I read it. She was positive, HIV. I said, is that why you are crying? She said, yes. She said that her mates are in, us, are in her husband's house. They are carrying their baby. This is what she is carrying up and down. I said, because you chose to carry it up and down. It's a choice that you made. I be when they gave you in the hospital, they said, you'll be carrying it up and down. Is that what they told you? He said, no. I said, so. I now told her, I said, come. The Bible says with men, this is impossible. Men say it's incurable. Abi, but with God, how many things? I said, who told you that this is what will kill you? By the time I spoke to her for a few minutes, her countenance brightened up. She's still alive till today. I'm talking about like 17 or 16 years ago. And I've not heard of any headache happening to her. 